Here would be my two-point policy plan, okay? This is what I would say if I were advising someone to run. I don't care who I work with. I'm going to do several things at the border. One, whatever the physical thing is that they say they need, I'm going to finish it. I also know that we're not a wall away from being safe. Mm -hmm. I am going to triple all of our processing capacities. I am going to triple our security capacity so you don't have the men and women who are keeping us safe there burdened by case dispositions. I'm going to build out these massive places to humanely house probably better than where they're coming from. Uh, take care of their kids, to keep all the families together all night. They're human beings. And I'm going to process them immediately, and I'm going to change the laws of what asylum means, and we're going to have a debate, and you guys are going to tell me either economic asylum is okay or it isn't, and if it is, under what guidelines. But once we get our rules set, right, and the guys who run it, CBP, have been saying for a generation the rules don't work, on asylum, because we don't allow economic asylum, except in the special deal we cut Venezuela. And once we have our rules, and I have my processing, and I have my places, you come in illegally, I catch you, I put you in the center, because you, if, you if you claim asylum, I have new rules, so I can fast track you, you don't check the box, you'll figure out what the boxes are, now you're going to check the box, I'm going to process you, and I'm going to send you back. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to be less expensive than what we're doing right now. And I'm going to take the people who are here. They're all paying taxes. We'll figure out their citizenship <laughs> status later. Sounds but like you're going to be voting for Trump. Everybody's yeah. paying it. <laughs> if, if he had gotten more of it done, because to him, the wall was a metaphor. That's all he needed. You know, they made that up on the campaign bus. We were never a wall away from safety. The numbers were down. Why? Because Michelinan. Google that name, M-C-A-L-E-E-N-A-N. -E -E -N. When he ran Homeland Security, CBP before it, this, he wound up leaving because he couldn't take what was happening with Trump. But this guy's, uh, back to our earlier conversation about the institutions in the deep state, this is a guy who'd been there forever, was doing the job for the right reasons. He cut these deals with the home countries and with Mexico. That was the key. We cannot have everybody be processed at our border. You should set up infrastructure and pay in the home countries to have processing done then unless it's extreme. So if you do that as your domestic issue, that's my only domestic Question issue. Question for you. Can Foreign, Trump, can, I'm getting Iran. Can Trump do done. anything to get your vote? Could Trump do something to get anything my vote? Anything to get your vote? Or is it that personal and frustrating to not give him the well, vote? Well, first of all, uh, and this should be enough, he has made life hard for my family, gratuitously, okay? I used to speak to the president on a regular basis, and I would speak to his guys on an all-the-time basis, okay? And I did not go after him personally. I interviewed him routinely. I was one of the people to let him do the phoner interviews, and we were smart enough at CNN to say, offer it to Hillary. Offered to Hillary. And her campaign would be like, no, we're not giving you, a kid, you know, an interview like every third day. That's on them. He wanted the opportunity. We gave it to him. Oh, but the phone, he should be in front of a camera. Whatever. You know, you're either making your, your, your case or you're not. But you make it hard for me. I'm no different than you. If he had done something that made it harder for your kids in school, is he going to get your vote? If, if Trump did? Yeah. To me... I, I, uh, I'm purely based on policy because I don't need to have a relationship with that individual, okay? Meaning, uh, uh, will there be personal stuff that if somebody goes after my brother and, and that side? Absolutely. But that, that's not Trump's doing. That's the establishment doing oh, it no, to I'm try not to ruin him your for life. That wasn't brother. Trump. I'm not, I'm not blaming no, no. him for that. What happened to even you, bro, what happened to you is... I'm not blaming him for me either. I know. Although what, I know he celebrated it. What you're saying it. is he, he went after my family, though. He, you know, he, you know and, and, and what he did. Well, hey, he did. By weaponizing your, the me... The left went after your family. The establishment went after your family. There's no question that we have had our travails. Yeah. Um, you will never... I mean, we talk on a regular basis. You will never hear any sense of pity party coming from me. I'm no victim. My brother's no victim. Oh, I totally get that. Um, that's, not, that's not why I'm but, saying it, but to look, say be a victim. There were things happened that obviously I'm not happy about, that I don't think was fair, um, and that's okay.
because life is life. Life is not fair. Fair is the only four-letter word, my therapist always says. Uh, and I love that line, so I'll steal it. But um, I don't go policy only. I think policy is a panacea in a lot of ways. You know, it's a really a cure-all if you can get to it. But the people matter. Uh, and if you don't act with integrity and you want to lead me, by the way, it's not, I'm not saying it's the standard for me. I'm flawed. I don't want to lead. I'm not asking for your vote. I don't think I'm the best of us. I think I'm the rest of us. If you want to be elevated, well, then there's going to be a standard. Accountability. He yeah. does not meet that standard. Now, the best argument for him is, oh, but Biden does. I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, but you've said Biden's a nice guy. He is a nice guy. I loved his son, Bo. Bo would have been an amazing leader for our country. He would have been a generational leader. He was not, uh, Joe was nice when my father died. He said nice things to us. That's nice. Do I think he's the best of us? No. Do I think he's the best we can do as president? Absolutely not. Do I think he's the best the Democrats can do? Hell no. If you get those two, though, you're going to sit it out? Or are you going to go? Oh, if it's, if it's Biden, Trump. Look, for me, again, um, we survived a Trump administration. Uh, would we survive another one? Yes. Yes. I don't think there's any greater risk to America with him than with Biden. And for people who are now going to attack me, and say, what are you talking about? Trump is like this crazy man. It, well, look, you know, as Patrick says, the data is the data. Nobody was trying to kill us when Trump was president in a way that they're not now. If anything, there's more hostility. And you can have reasons for that any way you want. I'm just saying existentially, I'm not afraid of a Trump presidency. Um, existentially, I'm not afraid of another Biden presidency because... Unlike many people in America, I believe that the country is much stronger than any individual leader. Um, we survived the Russia thing. We survived January 6th. We survived having Biden as a gaffe machine. We survived uh, Congress uh, going after each other and doing nothing for the rest of us. We survive these things. Are we better for it? No. Uh, should we be doing things differently? Yes. I think it happens. I don't know when. I don't even know why. But, you know, in terms of who I'm going to vote for, I would really have to see where we are at that moment in time. Uh, and So you're open to Trump vote? I am always open. And I'll tell you this. People say, oh, bullshit, you've never voted for a Republican in your life. Wrong. And not only have I, the first vote I ever cast was for a Republican. Who was that? 1988, I'm a freshman in college. Um, Dukakis is running against George H.W. Bush. Um, Dukakis, honorable man, good man, one of the early victims of media savagery, by the way, with what they did with his wife. But um, to me, he was too close to my father's story Mm -hmm. And it bothered me that if it's going to be him, then it should have been Pop. I voted for Bush. Was he the guy that they put in the uh, the tank, tank and he just looked That's like game a over with the helmet that was like this? Big. Yeah, it just was not a good one so, for him. So, so okay, but so, so I'm open. Look, John McCain. Okay, may he rest in peace. When he was running against Obama, I believed in him as a leader. And look, people will talk about him personally and all these things. He lived through tremendous things. Of course, there were going to be scars on him. Of course, he had personal limitations and some eccentricities. But he defined his own fate. If it had stayed without the economy going down, he was a strong choice for keeping America safe. When the economy happened, he had already sold himself out. But I was very strongly supportive. Chris, of for you to even think about the two votes... You have four years of results with Trump, four years of results, three years of results with Biden. Data shows it's not even close. And I think that's the part, you know, with with. So I talk to a lot of guys in different places and we have a relationship and I have a wide range of audience. I like sports. So sports liberals are like, dude, I watch your shit, but I don't agree with your problem. Like, dude, I just talking about sports. I'll just kind of talk. <laughs> I like Hollywood and I'm freaking like I know hip hop like from. 
you know, 1990 till 2003. Yeah, it ends there. I, it ends uh, there. But good. I know hip hop, and, and I know some real go back ghetto a little bit more to get hip-hop. Big Daddy Kane in there. I didn't come to the Big states till 1990. So Big to me, Daddy Kane is strong. Was the guy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come sure. get some, you bum. You'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, my range is I'm so interested in so many different topics, but to me. I think sometimes the creative, the, the the liberal side is like, oh, if there is anybody, you can, ne- if they find out where you live in your community, you voted for him, dude, your tires will be slashed every flipping day mm-hmm. for a month straight. And they, so you know what kind of things they would do to you if they, and, and that fear of losing that. Uh, uh, community. I, I have no fear Chris, of losing that community. They're, they're not for me. Chris, if you voted for Trump, you know what they would do to you? They would torture you. Yeah. They would torture Listen, you. Listen, I didn't say I would vote for Trump. I'm saying you have to be open to the circumstances at the time. Oh, and to uh, me, the alternative is Joe? Donald Trump, to me, yeah. has betrayed the trust and the standard of a leader for America. And he has done it many times over. And that's part of the result structure for me. I can't just look at the economy and migration at the southern border. This is a guy who has reinforced too many things that I think are destructive to human life. So what's more? So, so I would have to see where are we in the state of so play at that time and what is he offering? Has he changed it all? But I got to be open. But I'm telling you, it's, if he's depending on me to win, he's not in good shape. <laughs> so if, if it was like if you're thinking about the risk of crossing the border and that guy – you know, build a wall and oh, we're not going to let him build a wall. And now Biden wants to build a wall because like almost every policy had, they stopped, they're bringing it back. Like it's validating. But the what- wall was always a distraction. What made the difference under Trump was two things. One, people believed they were going to have bad outcomes if they came to America with Trump. And that was impactful in keeping them away. Now, you can make the argument that that's not the message America should be sending out, but it was true. Two, was the deals that they cut with the home countries and with Mexico that Biden got rid of as soon as he came in to do that stupid thing that one administration does when it beats another to erase the legacy as much as they can. It was a huge mistake. And what Trump didn't do, even though he had the political clout and numbers to do it, was do all these other things that CBP has been begging for, to change the rules, to change the processing capabilities, the housing capabilities. Instead, it devolved into this bullshit sanctuary cities and the wall and the brown menace and the bad hombres. And that's all cheap demagoguery that didn't fix it. He could have fixed it and didn't. The world is a shit show today because nobody fears our president. And if we had another Biden, all the people that you want to do good for, they would get destroyed under another Biden because nobody fears, no respects Biden. He could be a sweetheart of a guy. I don't know. But how do you think Trump would get things done when you know there's going to be an election right away that is a, a cantilever, right, that balances it out? So now he doesn't have Congress. How's he going to get anything done? Nobody's going to work with him. Well, that's his job, though. And, and say, But he didn't do it the last time he, he was in there. He couldn't get deals well, but, done. But there's a reason for it, because sometimes on your first term, you don't want to be too aggressive because you were concerned about your second You life. think Trump was suffering from a lack of I, aggression? I, 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 would, I would say sometimes you he's a legacy guy. You know he's a legacy guy. So for a guy that's a legacy guy, he doesn't want to be a one-term guy. Well, and, and don't forget Pat, that, that right before he even got in, the fake Russia collusion that everybody was pushing, Chris CNN was pushing it too, Every, like he came in with Russia, Russia. It was just four years of he's compromised. He's this. How are you supposed to do your job when every single day, yeah. every freaking news media outlet is saying that you're a Russian asset? I just have one question. Fake. I have one question on Trump. And, and you're talking to somebody who was diametrically opposed to even considering voting for him now he's the tattoo four on years back. ago. Now I got the Trump stamp on he's my lower back, back now. But um, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely considering voting for Trump this time. Not even a question. The question is, though, how much can he really get done in just a one four-year term this time? Because it's not like it's a two-term president. He had his four, hiatus, now he's going to get done again. I don't even know the question where is you get how a much- sense of confidence that that's what he wants. Patrick says he's a legacy guy. I would say, okay, maybe his own personal legacy of aggrandizement. Uh, the guy's never been about anything bigger than himself in his entire life. I agree with that. He's never built anything that didn't have his name on it. Uh, and he's never run anything well that didn't go straight into the ground. So the guy's a little bit of a paper tiger for me in that regard. Now, you're saying, yeah, but compare him to the alternative. Well, right. that's what the voters are going to do. 
Um, you know, am I, I looking at him as our, uh, my personal best choice or the country's? No. Well, Do I problem, think there are better people in that party? The, yeah. The problem that I think is happening, and it's valid, is there's this uh, sort of like romantification of Trump because look at the alternative. It's like if, if you're running against Biden, yeah, it's but like, it, well, the good old days. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. Trump. But it's about what your standard is. You know, Patrick and uh, and you and me and Vinny and Tom, we're sitting here talking about we got to get back to values. We got to get back to standards. We got to back to Trump's not your guy. Yeah, Trump's not your guy. Trump so, Trump is the here's the rule. I'm going to break it. I'm going to get away with it because I know the game and everybody does mm -hmm. this. So it's OK. You know, what's the great thing about data. Again, first three years pre COVID pre the left did everything they could to get the, you know, instead of making China the enemy, they made him the enemy. First three years, it was on fire. No war, peace, things were good. Of course, media destroyed America, dividing them against each other, hardcore, left against right, left against right, you know, Trump's the boogeyman. Then COVID happened and they said, nope, Trump's the enemy. Trump's the enemy, Trump's the enemy. And the people that took the vaccine, they got the vaccine quickly because of Trump. But if he got it quick, Kamala Harris said, I would never take the vaccine that quickly. Then went the party change. Oh, we should take the vaccine now. Then it was, It's like, what do you stand for? You just stand for what the establishment told you. Well, look, there was a Trump did the same thing, right? You are right. Operation Warp Speed. I live next to a guy who was a fundamental part of it. It would not have happened had former President Trump not cleared so many of the obstacles and made the funding necessary and did exactly what our leaders should do in situations. I don't know how this is normally done, but it's not going to be done that this way now. And I don't care what rules I'm breaking. Let's just get this done. It was extraordinary. Then it became weaponized politically, and he had to get quiet about it. It's the only time I've ever heard him booed is when he would say, I think you should take the vaccine, and people would yeah. boo him. Why? It was weaponized by his own people, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does show. You know what it always showed to me? It's not about Trump, okay? The grievance, the animus that he is a symbol of, that he motivates, and that he says, I will fight for you. I'm your guy. That allows people to say, look, I don't want to be this guy, except for the money, but... Um, he is for me and he's against what I fear most is the only time you saw that that's truly the dynamic. It's not Trump. Trump didn't start the fire. Trump didn't create this. Trump Billy recognized it. That's right. Trump <laughs> recognized it and he used it. Mm -hmm. And the only time you saw it was on the vaccine where when those people, no, I don't trust government. I don't trust. Now you're not, now you're not my guy anymore. You became an instrument of what I'm worried about. I boo you. It's the only time it's ever happened because it's the only time he went against his read on what those people were going to want. Uh, so again, I'm with you on the data. But I'll tell you where you got to believe that somebody can give you the same policies that you want and get more of them done than Trump. I'll t and this is personal with you and Trump. Clearly, obviously, totally get it. If the, if anyone did anything to disrespect my family, I'd have a hard time voting for them. But where Pat is absolutely right, you talked about this two podcasts ago. Trump is not the enemy. I think we've all been fed this. This thing of lies where it's he's the enemy, he's against America, he's anti-American, he's in bed with Russia, and it turned out that was actually false. Yeah, I don't, fake news. I, don't, I don't believe and I never believed he was in bed with Russia. What I believed, and I still believe, is that investigation was a waste of time. Ab initio. Oh, that's not what you were saying when you were at CNN. Yes, it was. Go take a look. But you still covered it. That's the job. You got a president who's under investigation by a special prosecutor. You're not going to ignore it unless you're Fox. And, and even they <laughs> ha had to do uh, some of it. What I said from the beginning and what has always been true is his campaign did stupid things that they shouldn't have done. The guys who are in that business know not to do when it comes to who they talk to, who wants to help them and what kind of meetings they take. That is considered collusion as a behavior, not a crime. Collusion is not a crime. Conspiracy is. They were nowhere near conspiracy. Um, Donald Trump was never, in my estimation, anything like compromised by Russia. Did he stupidly say, WikiLeaks, do more of it, uh, and Russian troll farms, do this and do that? And when you say shit like that, are you baiting a media that is desperate to come after you? Yes, and you're going to get what you ask for yeah. with the media when it comes to negativity. And that was always true. And those behaviors were wrong. Should they have been investigated criminally that way and to that degree? No. Um, was the dossier being paid for ultimately by, Hillary by uh, Hillary's uh, team? Mm -hmm. Should that have been known sooner? 
Yes. Oh, was all of it about the dossier? No. All of it was not about the Chris, dossier. Chris, I, I know we got to run. I have one last question for Hurry you. Hurry up. I'm going to pee. Trump wins. Let's go to this magical, you know, January 20th, 2025. Trump wins. He's the new president. You know, again, remix vibe. How ugly will it get with the media, especially the CNNs, MSNBCs of the world, mainstream media, knowing what you know, you know, taking sort of a bird's eye Not view. as bad as you think. Okay, tell look, us why. Uh, look, e even look, all I control is my voice within my show on News Nation. Okay, I don't have any control over News Nation. I control what comes out of my face on News Nation and on my podcast and on your podcast. I would give him a fair shot. Uh, why? Because the country needs him now. If he's in the position, if the country's put him in that position, then he's got to get it. Are they going to come after him? Yeah, if they have an opportunity. Will people be a little sick of it, and will that matter? Hmm. Yes. If it doesn't rate and resonate, they won't do it as much. Hmm. Will the Democrats, if they have the authority, because we got to see what happens in the election, would they go after him anew? <clears throat> I don't think so. So you're saying the third time's the charm for Trump? I don't know that it's the charm. I think that he has a very legitimate chance of winning. Uh, which to me is a sad commentary about the GOP because you should be able to beat Biden. Based on Biden's not making a case for himself and not defending propositions that are being used against him, which is what an election is about, right? You don't tell me your story, somebody else will, and you won't like the ending. They should be able to do better than Trump. Uh, the Republicans, based on policy and principle, should be able to do better than Trump. But the people get what they want. And I think he's very well positioned, even with all the litigation, because people don't believe in the system that's uh, prosecuting him. But if he gets elected, I give him a fair shot. I would invite him on the show. I'd cover his administration. And I would do a case by case moving forward, not what we lived through in the past. It's not a job. Uh, by the way, for those of you watching this, uh, I trust at one point you hated what Chris said. You love what Chris said. You probably hated what I said. You love what I said. You hated what Vinny said. You love what Vinny said. And the list goes on for everybody else here. I don't care. I like these conversations, period. I love them. I love these conversations. These are my favorite conversations because to me, I, you're not the, um, you know, when we talk, yeah, we're not going to agree. Some of the best podcasts you and I have ever done is not recorded. It's on a phone call that we just talked. It's True. the best conversations because it's just you let it rip. But uh, that maybe it's being Armenian, maybe it's being a Syrian, maybe it's being Persian. Like we like a good argument, a good debate, but then we want to go have food together and sit down and talk and do all that stuff. And I think there's some similarities that with uh, you know the Italian side. There's well, a uh, but I believe what uh, I believe what you're about. You see, we've made it all about the conflict, where if you disagree, there's got to be a problem. Like we're Jets versus Dolphin fans. You know, mm. that's sports. Leave it there. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets better in business if you can't be open to dissent. I mean, you've been making so much success, so much in your young life. It's not because you've been closed off to anybody who doesn't agree with you. It's the opposite, which is one of your main talents. We've gotten away from that, and it's killing us, especially in a democracy, especially in America. You can't, my father did a debate tour with Newt Gingrich. <laughs> and, you know, my father may rest wow. in peace, you know, he would, you know, of course, look, Newt's had his issues in life and everybody does, but they did not agree. Um, but he respected where Newt was coming from on his positions and why he understood the dynamics the way he did. And they would have arguments and they would argue and it would get hot because they were disagreeing about things that both people uh, believed. If the outcome goes the way you go, this is a problem for something I care about. But it wasn't you're a bad guy. It's that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.